ASAP Rocky is a rapper with a unique sense of style and an unmistakable flow. But what many people don't know is that he has also been responsible for the rise of another unlikely star, a homeless man known as Joe Fox. But first, let's start with some background. Fox was born in London, and growing up as a child, Joe didn't really have the best childhood. As a young child, he moved around England a lot because of his mother's boyfriend, who she wanted to get away from. Joe never got to meet his father due to his mother moving them away from him at a young age because he wasn't really much of a good person, and they often stayed at women's refugee camps in the north of England. He always moved from school to school, and even said that he'd be at a school for about six weeks, and then they'd be gone. They eventually were granted housing, but due to his mother bringing in strange and odd people into their home, she wasn't allowed to look after him anymore. After this, Joe was put into institutional care for a little bit, and for a while lived with his family in East London. His mother eventually was granted custody of him again, and they lived in Leeds. Unknowingly to him, this is where he would find his love for making music. As a teenager, he used to buy cheap guitars from charity shops, or just borrow guitars from friends, and began to teach himself how to play the guitar. Joe said that the first song he heard that he loved was Waterloo Sunset by The Kinks. He said, when I heard Waterloo Sunset, I was like, wow, I wanted to be inside the song. I wanted to be the people walking on Waterloo Bridge. I just wanted to be part of that world. Joe always had ambition to be a songwriter, and at the beginning he wrote a few bad songs about his rough childhood and often credits his girlfriend at the time with helping him to persevere with his music career. Joe was more of an old soul who listened to more classic artists like Velvet Underground, Tracy Chapman, and Carole King, and as a result hadn't been listening to modern music. It was in 2015 when Joe and Rocky first met. Since Joe was now on his own and didn't have a job, he would often sell mixtapes of his music on the streets of London so he could have money for somewhere to live. Rocky and his longtime producer Hector Delgado just happened to be walking on Wardour Street where Joe was selling his mixtapes in Soho at 4 a.m. On the album and we just met out in Soho at Dean Street Studios about 4 a.m. one time he was passing and we just ever since we just clicked man he was just a dope artist so yeah. So that was it from, from there on in? You guys just started rolling and made music together? Wow. Non-stop. Wow. Every day. How do you know when you meet someone at 4 a.m. in a studio that possibly there's a We weren't in the studio. I was leaving the studio okay. going to uh, get some Starbucks when I met him. So we didn't meet in the studio. Right. But um, how did I know? Yeah, how do you get that feeling from people? Because I'm a visionary. This is, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a talent. I'm not trying to be funny. It's the truth. They talked some more about music and eventually went back to the studio for a recording session and Rocky allowed Joe to stay in his hotel room and sleep on the sofa since Joe had nowhere to stay. Rent in London's crazy expensive. So when I met Rocky, he, um, he immediately let me stay in his hotel. No, yeah, I was lucky to meet him when I did. I didn't know who he was. I knew the name ASAP. I just tried to sell him a CD like I was doing at the time, you know. He went down into the studio. The first song I played him was Listen Up Katie. Um, and then I played him a song called Welcome to the Ghetto and then Head Down Low. And he was, he was just saying, are these your songs? Yo, are these your songs? And I said, yeah, they're my songs. And that was it, really. From that recording session, Joe became an integral part of ASAP Rocky's creative process, contributing to several tracks on his album, At Long Last ASAP. Rocky then brought Joe to New York City, where they continued to work on the album. Joe was featured on five songs off of the At Long Last ASAP album, which were Holy Ghost, where Joe sang the chorus and added his unique sound to the track. Fine Wine, where Joe also sang the chorus and gave the song a haunting vibe. Max B, where Joe provides the hook and a soulful touch to the song. Far Side, where Joe sang the chorus, adding a dreamy quality to the song. Finally, the fifth song, Jukebox Joints, 
which featured Joe's distinctive voice and guitar playing. This track was an instant hit, and Joe became an overnight sensation, with millions of views on YouTube and an army of fans around the world. Fox says that the recording process for the album would mostly be him coming to Rocky and showing him what he wrote, or Rocky would play him something, and Joe would react and write to it. Like on Max B, which was the first song they recorded. Rocky wanted Joe to write a chorus about Max B's legal situation, but Joe didn't know anything about Max B, so Rocky told him about his story, and he wrote about it. Joe even said him and Rocky only recorded their verses at night, saying, everything I've sung on this album was between the hours of 1 a.m. and 6 a.m. As Joe and Rocky worked together on a few tracks, before they knew it, Joe's music was getting attention from fans and critics alike. After the release of Rocky's album, it debuted at number one, and this only brought great popularity to Joe Fox's name. He was noticed all over New York and L.A., and with that came a whole lot of new ears to listen to his music. Joe Fox, once a struggling homeless man, is now a rising star in his own right, thanks to the kindness and vision of ASAP Rocky. Joe Fox eventually released his debut album, After Show, in 2016, which featured production from ASAP Rocky and a feature from Nas and other big names in the industry. The album was well received by fans and critics, and it helped Joe establish himself as a rising star in the music scene. So what can we learn from this story? Well, for one, it shows the power of mentorship and collaboration in the music industry. When Rocky saw potential in Joe Fox, he didn't hesitate to help him out and give him a chance to shine. It also shows that talent can come from anywhere, and that sometimes all it takes is a little bit of luck and exposure to make it big. And finally, it's a reminder that music has the power to transcend boundaries and bring people together, no matter where they come from or what their background is.